we have chemicals to play with. Ow. Anyway, so I'm going to start off with the thing that would probably be considered the safest. And I'll, uh, I'll show you as we go here. Uh, Gugon. Uh, it's, uh, it's almost empty. And I think it's just evaporated while it's been sitting in there. Uh, so from the safest to the worst case scenario, it would probably be something like paint stripper. We really don't want to do that because uh, I'm going to work on an assumption here. I, I know I could be uh, in trouble here, that the burst was sprayed, okay? Uh, they may very well stain the yellow and then spray the darker colors over that. Uh, but I know on the early guitars, uh, I know for sure with the early electrics in Gibson's line, which wasn't until the 50s, granted. So in 36, they could have been doing something completely different. The owner tends to think it's lacquer. He does a lot of research on these things. I was thinking it could even be um, shellac, but uh, I don't know. We won't know until we start messing with some things. And unfortunately, there isn't a place that uh, is painted that's not exposed, like there wasn't any paint on the inside that I could test this on. So I have the, the lineup I have here. The lineup I have here is... Uh, Naphtha, uh, which is now illegal in California. So we're not filming this in California, in case anybody's wondering. Um, the uh, Anybody in the government, that is. Uh, paint thinner is not going to do a thing to it. Oh, I'm not in the camera yet. I'm still not in the camera. Maybe I should raise the camera up instead of the product. Here we go. So paint thinner, not, uh, not even in the, in the competition here. Denatured alcohol, if uh, if this is indeed shellac, this will indeed dissolve the finish. It may not do anything to the glue, but it will dissolve the finish. And then we have lacquer thinner, in which case if this is a lacquered guitar, which it probably is, uh, the lacquer thinner will actually dissolve the finish uh, and not necessarily the glue. So we have to be very careful. Uh, so we're going to start out with the least destructive, which should, by all rights, be the Gugon. Now, the owner did try Gugon. He mentioned that to me, and he said that maybe he didn't, he just rubbed it on and rubbed it off. Well, no, you do have to let it set for a while. So maybe if we uh, we can do that, we can let it set for a while. And I kind of made a joke with the respirator and the gloves earlier, but that's not a... Uh, not a bad idea at all if you're using paint stripper. Uh, and Gugon smells really bad. I don't know if it's really as bad as it smells or or what. I'm not sure what the... I could look, I guess, on the can and find out. So here we go. Uh, I also decided that if I was going to do anything that might damage something, the place to do it is up here on the solid black because um, that could be... Theoretically, that could be touched up easier than trying to touch up the the fade on the shading here, the um, first. So, uh, yeah, we'll start here, and we will just start rubbing an area and see if we can tell anything at all is happening. And. Does feel it does feel a little gooey actually. Well, you know, well, I don't know, I don't know, you know. Uh, let's go ahead and put a little more on. I'm not getting any color off of here. I am getting some brown. Now, oh, I keep forgetting that the camera needs to be played with. So, kind of brown. That's just, could very well just be dirt stuck in this glue. Um, 
I don't, if I were, well, I mean, I can certainly melt through the lacquer. Uh, there would be clear coat over this as well, so. This looks like it might be a thing we do in stages. All right, let's try it on a clean spot. And let's just let it sit there for a while. If I had more of this, I would just Dump it on there. We are trying to be careful still, however. Oh, by the way, the, the string nut fell out of this thing. And uh, closer inspection, I'm going to say this was chromed. And so uh, by... Um, what was the other thing I was talking about? These pieces here, the, pull, uh, the uh, magnet or not the bar portion of that, I think those are probably chromed as well then. Um, they look very, very much the same color, same uh, kind of texture. So. so now all I have to do to really mess this up is just rub on this and then have it just go to bare wood all of a sudden. Now, you know what? I believe uh, it looks like it's still rough, though, but it may have damaged the finish under the glue. And I'm not, I'm not picking up any, any color at all other than this. Now, maybe they sprayed that honey color all over everything, or maybe that's the old lacquer color. Oh, I should be in the camera. The old lacquer color. I don't know. I really do not know at this point. Um, I am going to recommend to him just from this, because I know that if I get lacquer thinner on here, that it's going to, see now I'm not feeling gooey. I got down, I'm pretty sure I got down to a point where this is no longer gooey. You know, this can of goo, goop off is, uh, I called it goo gone, didn't I? This is a can of goop off. This can of goop off is so old uh, that it may actually have a different composition than the stuff that the other guy, the owner of this guitar is using. Uh, so, We'll have to, we'll just kind of have to see. I'm, uh, I'm going to just keep rubbing on this same spot here because now that it's gotten most of that residue off of there, it seems like we're down to a halfway decent finish or surface. And I'm not picking up any black. I instantly get a varnish on here though, so I don't know. I'm not sure what that is. Really don't want to tempt fate. Well, okay, let's tempt fate. What's the worst that could happen? I could have to touch this. Oh, see, when I rub it with a dry one, it's still kind of gooey feeling down here. So I may not be down to the original finish yet, or I may be into the original finish, and with that chemical making it uh, tacky, which should dry at some point, but I just rubbed the shine right out of it by touching it with a dry towel. I'm gonna dry, I'm gonna try a little um, denatured alcohol just to see what happens here. Cause uh, that might cut this glue and it might also, uh, it, it, I know it's not gonna phase a, a lacquer finish. So let's try that. All right, let's get this. So I am, I am into the denatured alcohol. I always double check myself because I was wet sanding with naphtha once on a lacquered guitar that I built and I accidentally had the can sitting right next to it. I accidentally grabbed lacquer thinner and started rubbing it after I sanded it. And you can imagine what a mess that made. All right, so here we are, denatured alcohol. Ooh, 
it's it's peeling stuff up. It's not peeling up the the black though, which is a good sign. It actually seems to be working this pretty pretty rapidly. Oh. All right, I believe we have found what we want or need for my customer to carry on with this. I probably, oh, that made it really gooey. Huh, sweet. All right, let's, uh, let's do this again. Maybe I should talk him into letting me do this. It's it's a time issue, and time is money, but I think I can do this quick enough that it won't be a big deal. I'll give him the option, of course. You see all this stuff rolling up here? This is not paper towel, this is glue. So that's, we were pulling it up with the um, with the goof off or yeah goof off i always want to call it the other thing anyway uh, we were definitely pulling it with the goof off but we were pulling it nearly as rapidly as this so i'm going to get those little i am also going to do this uh, on a section that's over the um, the burst just to be sure that we can get away with that this could probably be buffed up. Oh, I still have to fill those holes in the front. I was thinking I was all I had to do was flip this over and um, restring it. But I, I yeah, I got to touch up those holes or not touch them up. You know, you know what I mean. I got to fill them and then touch them up. So here's an area that does not have glue stuck to it right here, or that doesn't have very much glue stuck to it. So let's see if we can just. Get that moist and then uh, see what happens. So, actually, feels a little soft. But again, I'm not taking any color off of it. You know, I've got a gun stock to refinish, which is not something I do normally, and I Somebody was asking me to refinish a guitar, I would say no, because uh, that's not something that I want to get involved in. But I thought, oh, okay, Gunstock's not huge, and I know the guy, and I kind of thought, oh, I can help the guy out a little bit. This is all, yeah, I think this is going to be a, a, a winner for uh, my buddy here. All right, uh, it, it definitely makes things gooey, so... I don't know if that's making the, the existing finish gooey. Could be. Probably is. Maybe maybe his safest bet will be just to struggle with the goo gone or the goof off because uh, the it's definitely getting gooey. I guess the only other way to know if that's getting gooey because it's reacting with the lacquer finish or it or because it's um, because it's shellac, would be to use lacquer thinner and find out. But I don't think I want to. I don't think I want to go there really. To tell you the truth, now this is already not sticky up here, so it's had a chance to flash or whatever it's going to do. All right, I'm. Uh, I think I'm done for the evening. Maybe I will uh, do some stain tests on the ends of toothpicks. Um, I'm, I'm hesitating to turn this over. I don't want it to stick to this bench here. But anyway, I've got these holes I mentioned earlier all around here, and it's easier to get to them with the strings off. So um, it probably would have been easier to get to them with the back off, but I wasn't thinking that far ahead. So I'm not pulling the back off again. So, um, yeah, I'm going to do some stain tests on the ends of toothpicks and see what they look like. I mentioned before, I don't think they could look any worse than the other things that have been patched here. Looks like they just put wood filler in there and I don't even know if they put anything over it. It doesn't really appear to be finished. Okay. 
Okay, let me catch you up here. Uh, I uh, filmed, recorded, using um, the Goo Gone on here and also the, what's that stuff called? Denatured alcohol. Uh, so the Goo Gone, denatured alcohol. Uh, I wanted to try naphtha just to see what it would do. It didn't do anything. It, uh, naphtha, you know, even though it's a lighter fluid, it's, and it's probably a little more volatile than paint thinner. It's not really a lot more powerful than paint. It's some, but you know, there's limitations. So I actually even tried a little bit of lacquer thinner on it, which I was afraid would probably get into the finish. It, it got a lot gooier, a lot faster than the denatured alcohol. So that's what I'm going to recommend whether the owner does it or whether I do it, uh, denatured alcohol on the front. So that, okay, so I spent some time figuring out what colors looked best as far as the top match was concerned. And I basically cut a toothpick off, square, a couple of them, and sanded the end, and then I dunked one into some, uh, it's basically a mix of uh, amber shellac, not a full strength amber shellac, and then also the, um, um, Phoebe's, um, saddle tan, um, uh, leather dye. Uh, the leather dye appeared to be a little on the dark side when just holding it against the body and looking at the color. And the other one seemed to, to the, um, the amber shellac seemed to work really well. But I had cut a couple small pieces, I put them in the hole and, uh, not salt, not flush, but just, uh, you know, standing above it so that when you look down on it, you could just see the end of the, the toothpick, so to speak, you know, in the finish. It was much closer to the top than these are. Um, anyway, it was kind of weird. It ended up being the saddle tan that looked closer. I thought it was a little too yellow-orangey just looking at it. This, and I'm not sure you're going to be able to see that, but yeah, I think you can see it. See these lighter dots? These light dots? These are filler of some sort. This dot right here is a uh, is a toothpick, end grain toothpick with that saddle tan on it. Now every other saddle tan I did definitely turned out orangier looking than that. So what I decided to do, I was going to try to just cut them all to length, glue them and tap them down flush with the surface and call it good because then I wouldn't have to get in there and sand anything. This is a little proud so I mean I probably should sand it off. Um, so I decided to just glue the sticks in and then come back and I, uh, I'll demonstrate what I did here because it's just so cool. Where are we at if I go where? Yeah, I'll do it here because you can see it better there. Maybe if my hand isn't in the way. Yeah, it's in the way. I stuck the, um, I just, well, for a couple of them, I just held the tape between my fingers, but I found I had better control. Uh, I'm not in the camera. You know, if I just stuck it to the edge of the guitar, and then I have a two millimeter drill bit, which is what these toothpicks are. And I just held pressure on it and just spun it through the, through that to get it. And then I was able to just push it over the toothpick down uh, flush to the guitar, okay? so that out of the way I'm going to do is I'm going to take my flush saw which is right here and I will probably even though it is a flush saw and it's not supposed to cut on the back side I will run some more tape out here so I don't get into it and I'm just going to flush cut these these toothpicks off then I'm going to peel the paper and I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to use a regular size hole punch you know what a hole punch looks like right it's probably got holes not quite as big as that um, fret dot there. So, uh, and then that will give me a larger diameter hole to put over the post. Uh, and then I will take some sandpaper and the sand it flush. I'll probably sand it flush before I pull this off, but then I'll use a bigger hole on the paper and sand it flush. Now this paper is 5,007 inch thick. So that will allow me to dip down into that hole hit just the end of the stick and not hit the finish, or at least close enough that I could uh, call it good. You know, throw some stain on it and then uh, 
go ahead and drop a little bit of shellac on top of those just to seal them and, uh, and be done with that. Okay. And so I'm not going to film all that process, but I'll show you some pieces of it as we go. I'm having problems with the batteries in this camera. I told you they had swollen. So I'm down to two. I'm down to one really because I just took a battery out of this camera and I actually had to grab the little plastic tab on there with my soft jar, jar pliers and, uh, and pull it out that way because I couldn't get enough bite on it with just my fingers pulling it out of the camera. So they're stuck in there pretty good. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and do, I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to add some tape here and then I'm going to go ahead and get these trimmed down and do some sanding and we'll go from there. I might use a chisel and tear them down a little bit with a chisel. You just never know what might happen, but I'll tell you, I got, I got no secrets here. Uh, you do what you can do. Oh, actually, sometimes you even do what you can't do, so it's, that's pretty cool. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna be turning this thing around to hit it from different angles to get these pieces cut off. Okay. Anyway, I'll, I'll cut one off while I'm here. Oh, did I, why didn't I go out there further? I don't want to accidentally skin anything out here. All right, so we're gonna be careful here because we don't want to hit the end of the fretboard. And I'm just, I'm holding it up off the face of the guitar everywhere except for right here. All right, so that's flush with the paper. They're almost flush, I got one little high edge. And then what's gonna happen is, uh, I'm going to go ahead and just sand right on top of that paper. Until I'm flush. So I'm nice and flush there. Okay. Now I know, like I said, that paper is 5,000 thick. So when I peel this tape, that little, that little guy is going to be 5,000 thick. So with a larger hole around it, I should be able to get closer to the surface without sanding the surface. Okay. I hope I made that clear. All right, I'll be back. As you can see, I hole punched holes in the tape and I put tape uh, in position where I thought if I had any kind of like dragon, I would definitely protect the guitar. Um, this is a piece of 220. It's the uh, Velcro, oh, sorry. It's Velcro backed. Um, it's the Dura Gold. It's a it's a super good product. Anyway, I've been using it folded over. I think that supports it enough that it's not going to dip right down into the hole and scratch the surface. Now I was uh, I've sanded this a bit to the point where I'm I have the edge of the uh, tape thinned out quite a bit. I still can feel a little bit of an edge on the on the plug there. So I'm just gonna. And I'm not using the end of the corner because I would be dishing right out into the finish. I don't want to do that. So I'm making sure I'm straddling this hole in the, in the tape. And uh, I've been very careful. And I haven't seen any, any finish sanding happening yet. Okay. I don't want to deal with any finish sanding. I'd rather leave this plug just a little proud than uh, have to deal with a uh, blending finisher. So... Uh, I have, I'm happy with that. I'm going to uh, go ahead and use a little of this shellac on it, let that dry, and then I might just touch over it with a little bit of the, um, uh, the saddle tan color, I'm trying to get most of the stuff out. Of, I have a little tube here. Oh, that's going to be too much. So, and I will just set that on there and then I will dab off what I don't want here. Let it soak into the toothpick a bit. Here we go. Now, I don't know if you can see that. I can, I can see it here in regular eyeball. I'm going to let that dry and, uh, I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to touch it 
the little bit of saddle tan. Now that it's sealed, the saddle tan probably isn't going to soak into it. I'm going to go ahead and sand this one down right here, which is going to be harder to get to because of the end of the fretboard. Actually, I don't want to accidentally scuff to the end of the fretboard, so I'll put a little tape there. And I wasn't, you know, when I was postulating what I was going to do here, I wasn't, is that a word? Postulate? Theorizing what I was going to do here. I, uh, I wasn't sure exactly how well that would work. Um, it seemed like I have a little bit of a scratch over right at the very edge of the hole, but I don't think that's, I think that might have already been there. And I'm checking just to see what that feels like. I'm gonna go a bit more. I don't know if you heard that big, that little boing kind of sound. That was my, uh, one of my cans of various solvents heating up with the heater here and expanding, making noise. So they, these are, by the way, let's see if you can see, yeah, you can see this one. You know, it's a, it catches the edge of the toothpick. It's a little proud at five thousandths. Um, this is barely, barely doing anything now. And I, I, I didn't think about it on that one, but I could definitely go to a, a finer paper uh, right before. This is a 400, so going from 220 to 400. Now, I may very well get down into that hole because this paper is a lot flimsier. Doesn't really look like I did. So again, let's uh, let's get a dribble of this shellac on there. Oh, that's quite a dribble. Good to me. So anyway, you get the idea. Uh, I, I do want these to dry before I do anything else because I want to see what they're going to look like. Definitely have a spot. And I think, well, I mean, they look way better. I'll, I'll peel the tape before I should, so you can see them next to the other, the other patches. These things look already 100% better than the other patches did. But if I can get the color to match a little better, I'd like to. 